What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Bush coming at you solo today to bring you the George Pickens tale of the tape. Today, if you guys are new around here, what we do in these tale of the tape videos is we tell the story from start to finish about George Pickens so that you are best informed when it comes to your dynasty rookie drafts this May or this April, whenever you end up having them. So if this is your first episode tuning into our channel or the tale of the tape series, go and check out the other tale of the tape videos. If you go to our channel and go to the playlist tale of the tape, there's about 15 players that I've broke down so far, everybody ranging from Malik Willis, Brees Hall, Drake London, all those guys on YouTube. And then their player cards are available over on Patreon. This will actually be the second last tale of the tape that I'm doing. The last one will be Jahan Dotson. If you guys do want me to do any other ones, like you're just begging to see uh, you know, Rashad White or something like that, by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. But if you guys want access to our Patreon, again, it's linked in the description. You get our Dynasty Rankings Manifesto with our Rookie Rankings, Dynasty Rankings by Position, Bucketed Rankings by Age, all that good stuff. You also get priority for Dynasty Decisions, written player cards for these players, and that will I will do all the players for that. That won't just be the tail of the tape players, as well as drawings for listener leagues. So like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy this video. Now let's hit the intro. George Pickens, wide receiver from the Georgia Bulldogs, stands 21 years old, six foot three, 195 pounds. Basic information, so high school background measurables, a brief overview of his production. George Pickens was a five-star recruit. He was a five-star wide receiver out of Hoover, Alabama, number four wide receiver in the 2019 recruiting class, just behind Garrett Wilson, who was the wide receiver three in that class. Modest production throughout George Pickens' college career. He went 49 for 727 and eight touchdowns as a true freshman in 2019 with a 14.9% target share, including a monster 12 catch 175 yard game and a score in the bowl game against Baylor in 2019. Now it, that got everybody's attention. Everybody was okay. Five-star recruit produced as a true freshman. We're in on this guy from a Debbie perspective, from a dynasty perspective, he got the attention of fantasy players in that season in 2020. He played only eight games out of the 10 games that Georgia played Missed two with an upper body injury, but he failed to really build off of his freshman season. His freshman season, he was, you know, on pace to be this like next great prospect. We're all excited to take this guy in the 2022 class, but he only went from a 14.9% target share as a freshman to an 18% target share as a sophomore, 36 catches for 513 yards and six touchdowns in eight games. So not a terrible season, but nothing to uh, write home about. Heading into his junior season, it was make or break for George Pickens. Was he just a freshman flash in the pan? Was he destined to secure mediocre targets at the next level? Or is he ready to explode in his junior year? And then he tore his ACL. So in March uh, of 2021, he tore his ACL in spring practice. He did return in his 2021 season, his final season at Georgia, but he was on pitch counts. He was limited just seven or eight months off of an ACL surgery. We got a guy that with a serious injury, not a ton of production. The film is very, very crucial for a guy like this because we want to be able to extract and extrapolate what kind of player this guy is. Would he have been, you know, a superstar caliber wide receiver prospect had he played in 2021? Would he have taken that next step, commanded that huge target share, had that, you know, thousand plus yard season, 10 plus touchdown type of season? Or was he destined to just be, you know, again, a, like a mediocre type of prospect? So let's start with the six fundamental traits for wide receivers. Again, this is where we're digging into George Pickens' film. If you guys are new around here, I've determined these fundamental traits based on what matters for fantasy football, the basics of playing wide receiver. And they're easy to evaluate, easy to cross-reference with metrics so that we know that what we are seeing on film is in fact factual and, and it matches the metrics as well. So number one is how well a wide receiver can separate and run routes. So simply known as separation or route running, however you want to describe it. I was really impressed with George Pickens in this area because George Pickens is a vertical wide receiver. That is how he was used at Georgia. He was used on deep routes. His average depth of target was up near like 15 yards. This is a guy that runs down the field and on vertical route trees. Uh, typically when you see a guy like Mike Evans or DK Metcalf or Calvin Johnson, or somebody who is a deep threat type of wide receiver, Typically, they're running a lot of go routes. They're running a lot of things that stem off of go routes. So post routes, uh, digs, comebacks, stuff like that. So that is the type of route tree that we're talking about. 
from George Pickens in college. And that's how he was used at Georgia. So you can see a number of clips of him working on these type of routes and working back to the ball really well, especially on comebacks and digs. I was really impressed with how he, um, you know, ran routes from this perspective. This was really the first thing that stood out to me when I started watching Pickens. This is the role six foot three, 195 pound wide receiver on the outside who can affect the deep area of the field and work backwards from there on different types of routes. My question is, how consistently is he going to win? And obviously, if you're winning a large share of your routes, you're going to command targets. But the fact that George Pickens never had a high college target share, 15% his freshman year, 18% his sophomore year, and then obviously the injury ruined his junior year. We never saw him command a high share of the team's targets. 15.4% was his college target share overall. That's in the 29th percentile. That probably indicates that he isn't winning a super high rate of his routes, or you know maybe the quarterback is just too conservative to throw him downfield. Could be a bit of a combination of those things, but nonetheless, his college target share is concerning. Additionally, we have a guy who ranked worst in my wide receiver uh, database, basically about 25 wide receivers in my database in yards per route run with 1.93 and 71.9 was his PFF receiving grade in 2020 that ranked worst in the class as well. So we do have a bit of question marks about George Pickens ability. Number one, to run a complete route tree because he only ran a vertical route tree at Georgia. And number two, how consistently is this guy winning because he didn't command a high target share. Now, number two, the second fundamental trait is hands, right? And I'm not just talking about drops and stuff like that. I'm talking about how are his hands? Are they an asset to his game? Can he make simple contested catches outside of his frame? Can he make contested catches under heavy duress, spectacular catches? All that kind of stuff goes into how good a wide receiver's hands are. Of course, we've seen guys like DeAndre Hawkins and you know Larry Fitzgerald and Odell Beckham Jr. just display elite hands at the next level. And they've been very, very productive for fantasy. So one of George Pickens defining traits, in my opinion, is his ability to catch passes outside of his frame. His 64.3 contested catch rate in 2020, the last time he played a full season, ranked second in the class only to Drake London this year. So this is a guy that can come down with a lot of contested catches, catches through heavy traffic. You're going to see a lot of these clips going off as I'm talking about uh, him climbing the ladder, making the play, or just holding on through heavy duress contested catches get kind of a negative connotation. When you say a guy is a contested catch wide receiver, because everybody thinks of Nikhil Harry, who was obviously a huge bust, but recent guys like Cortland Sutton, who was also a contested catch wide receiver have shown that you can, you know, translate that ability to the next level. And you need to be able to do this to some extent to be a productive NFL wide receiver had some drops here and there, but again, I'm not really concerned about concentration drops and things of that nature. So overall, I would say George Pickett's hands are an asset to his game. Now, Moving on to the number three fundamental trait for wide receivers is yards after catchability. This is how well you create with the ball in your hands. Once you get open, once you catch the ball, are you able to do anything with it? And similar to what I said about Chris Olave in the last tale of the tape, this is where George Pickens falls short as a prospect, in my opinion. The clips that you'll see of George Pickens making plays after the catch look solid, look like he can do it from time to time. But those were really the only clips of him making anything happen after the catch that I could find. He doesn't have the functional strength to break tackles at six foot three, 195 pounds. He's not like a a well-built guy in terms of his frame. He's a little bit slender, a little bit lanky. So he's not going to break a whole, a whole lot of tackles. And he's also not a super, you know, twitchy ad uh, agile athlete to, to the point that he's going to make people miss either. So his 3.1 yards after catch per reception does rank last in the class. It's ranked the lowest in my database, only avoided three tackles in 2020 after the catch good for an 8.3% avoided tackle rate. So overall, this is not an area of his game that he really excels at. His average depth of target, like I mentioned, is up near 15 yards downfield. And so was a guy like Jamison Williams. But the difference between him and Jamison Williams, who ranked very highly in yards after catch per reception, is that Jamison Williams was a lot more twitchy after the catch. He was a lot, uh, even though he was a little bit stiff at times, he had the breakaway speed to be able to make things happen. George Pickens didn't really have that second gear, even though he tested pretty well. So uh, this is something that is especially concerning for me knowing that George Pickens did not command a high target share in college. So if he's not a target hog in the NFL and he can't make things happen after the catch, that really limits his ceiling because we've seen wide receivers like, um, you know, AJ Brown in recent years who aren't getting elite, elite level target shares, but they're so good after the catch that they can kind of make up for it in certain ways like that. And they're able to uh, make the most of the catches that they do get. And if George Pickens is not going to command a high target share and he's not able to uh, add much after the catch, that's definitely concerning. So Number four, the fourth fundamental trait is usage. So how they're used, where they win, and what kind of you know versatility we can deploy them at at the next level. Are they a downfield wide receiver? Are they a slot wide receiver? Do they work only on design touches? The primary role for Pickens, as I've kind of already talked about, 
at the next level is pretty obvious. He's going to be an outside wide receiver. 91% of his routes at Georgia were run from the outside. He's your typical deep threat, vertical route tree, 15 average depth of target. Like I talked about already, we've seen Mike Evans, you know, DK Metcalf and others be successful running this type of role in the NFL and be very, very productive for fantasy. And if Pickens continues to develop, he can definitely develop into that type of wide receiver. But the issue for George Pickens for me is that both of those guys are much more physical. Mike Evans, six foot five, 230 pounds, DK Metcalf, six foot three, 230 pounds, and they're stronger and they're better athletes uh, for their size as well. So my concern is that Pickens is more so in the mold of DJ Chark, more so in the mold of Marquez Valdez Scanling mainly due to the fact that he wasn't able to produce a high target season. And DK Metcalf wasn't able to do this either in his college career. But like I said, he's a better athlete. He's stronger. And he also went to a great landing spot like Seattle with a Russell Wilson, like uh, caliber deep passer and stuff like that. So an alpha wide receiver one season never existed from George Pickens. It could have happened this year, like I said, but we didn't actually see it from him in college. So that is a concern for me. He has the ability to win consistently downfield. But those are the concerns that I have. He doesn't have a whole lot of versatility. You can't use him in the slot. You're not going to use him on design touches or screen passes because like I said, he isn't very good after the catch. So what you're going to do is throw this guy on the outside, make him run vertical routes and see how he can develop from there. Maybe he eventually develops into a more versatile wide receiver. But as of right now, that is the role that I'm projecting for him at the next level. Number five is athleticism. What kind of natural gifts you have as a player, your speed, your acceleration, agility, all that kind of stuff contributes to how good of a receiver you can be like that. Like I've kind of talked about already with George Pickens, he has adequate athleticism for the role. I expect him to play in the NFL on the outside, like I mentioned, and he is a, thir- a 93rd percentile relative athletic score, according to math bomb for wide receivers since 1987. So he has four, four, seven speed at six foot, 395 pounds. That'll do for an outside wide receiver. But as I kind of expected, he doesn't have great bursts. His burst score was 36th percentile because he didn't have the greatest jumps in the world. And he also didn't run his agilities uh, at the combine or at his pro day because I expect them probably not to be very good. But it also could be because of the injury, why he didn't run his agilities. But either way, even if he did run his agilities at 100% full health, I would have expected them to be like 20, 20th or 30th percentile because I don't think he's a very agile player. He's a little bit stiff, a little bit upright. So Regardless, this is good athleticism, like I said, for a deep threat outside guy who should run a vertical route tree in the NFL. Now we move on to analytics profile. This is the sixth fundamental trait of a wide receiver. This is where the paper nerds get their pitchforks and their spreadsheets out, and they tell you why a wide receiver is a bad prospect. But the profile on paper for George Pickens is really a giant what if, because we don't know what would have happened this year had he not gotten injured. He has the one defining paper nerds profile that that people live by, which is breakout age. 18.5 breakout age in the 96th percentile. It is only behind Drake London in this class. That is very encouraging to see, right? When you look at him early in his career, he did break out as a very, very young player. And that is something that people will hold him, you know, into the future and, and keep believing in him because he broke out his freshman season. It, people did it with Brian Edwards. People did it with Rondell Moore. People did it with Nikhil Harry. People will hold on to very, very early college production. But that's the extent of the good, in my opinion. When you look at the rest of his profile, it isn't great. Uh, his receiving yards market share, like I said, uh, and as you guys can see on the screen, it started out great, but then it dipped. The injury happened, obviously, and we didn't get to see what happened in 2021. But even in 2020, he was below the average of wide receivers that have had a top 24 uh, season. College dominator in the 20th percentile, college target share in the 29th percentile. We have an uh, ACL tear, uh, which is also like a medical red flag for George Pickens. Is there a world that if he doesn't tear his ACL, he would have had a 29% target share this year, 100 plus or 1,000 plus receiving yards, 90 receptions, 10 plus touchdowns? Sure, we may have seen that. This profile could have been something, but we'll never find out due to the injury. He's not going to come back to school and all that kind of stuff. He is declaring for the NFL draft. So he's a big time projection from that perspective. Now we get into the subjective traits of the wide receiver. So I weigh these less than the fundamental traits. Like I already talked about, because those traits are quantifiable. They're traits that matter more for fantasy. These subjective traits, things like how smart a player is, how tough they are, their nuance and their route running and stuff. They're subjective in that we can evaluate them, but they don't necessarily equate directly to fantasy production. So when we look at George Pickens, he's a raw player for sure. I I don't think he is a very experienced player. You can tell um, just by watching him play that he does have some work to do in the route running department and all that kind of stuff. But on those vertical routes, like I said, he did show some nuance that I was impressed with, but he also doesn't show a whole lot of versatility overall. Like I've already kind of talked about, he doesn't profile as a guy that you can use on design touches 
or in the slot or anything like that. And in terms of his toughness, his physicality in the run game and at the catch point, he does show very, very solid physicality. But I think a lot of other scouts have pointed out the fact that his play strength is not, you know, where it needs to be for an outside wide receiver of that size. So I, again, I didn't really notice that, but you know, Lance Zerline types and, and Daniel Jeremiah types have brought that up as a concern for George Pickens. And then overall intangibles, um, kind of mad. Like, I don't think he's an overall, uh, an overly smart player, an overly tough player. I think he's kind of just adequate across the board in those areas. So let's get into final grades. How does George Pickens stack up with the rest of the class based on a scale of 1100, which is the scale I grade on 726.25 out of 1100 on my weighted scale is how Pickens graded out for me. And that equates to an early third round talent at the wide receiver position, biggest strengths being his athleticism and speed, his downfield ability, his hands, contested catch ability, and the fact that he produced at a young age. Biggest weaknesses are basically the rest of his profile, like I talked about, never having high-level production or target share, and the lack of yards after catchability, as well as the lack of versatility that I saw from him on film. So he is currently my wide receiver seven. I have him behind the top three guys, London, Burks, and Wilson, very comfortably. And I also have him pretty comfortably behind Chris Olave and Jamison Williams, who make up my tier two of wide receivers. Then I have him also behind David Bell, who would probably be in the same tier as him, um, as far as what kind of wide receiver prospects we're talking about. But I do think David Bell has more defining traits and more translatable production than what George Pickens has at this point in time. I have yet to grade Jahan Dotson and Sky Moore and Christian Watson among this tier of wide receivers. If I had to guess, I would say Dotson probably will grade out higher than him, but Sky and Watson will probably be in the same range. I went in expecting to love George Pickens, and I got to be honest, I was a tad disappointed. I thought he'd have a little bit more to his game than what I consider probably a guy that is a one-trick pony, deep threat type of wide receiver, but it doesn't mean he can't develop into more. So comparable players for uh, George Pickens. Uh, my comp for George Pickens is actually Terrace Marshall. I also saw a bit of DJ Chark, a bit of Denzel Mims. Again, not a great list to be a part of. To be honest, he has some elements of his game to all of those guys, but Marshall had similar concerns. Terrace Marshall, for me, the concerns were him were uh, with him were how good is he after the catch? How you know smart is he? How tough is he? Some of his profile was you know a little bit off. He didn't have the greatest target share in college, but we kind of you know shrugged it off because he played with Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Um, he was a little bit more versatile because he did play in the slot coming out of LSU last year. But I think with, with Terrace Marshall, the guy that I was projecting at the next level was an outside wide receiver, a guy that could be a deep threat in the offense because he had the athleticism and he had the downfield ability. But George Pickens to me is probably going to have to play a similar role. Now, does that mean he's going to be, you know, what I would consider a bust in Terrace Marshall, or is he going to be um, a guy that actually, you know, breaks through and, and ascends to that like Chase Claypool type of area? Because I do think, we're talking about a guy with like a Chase Claypool type ceiling. I don't think we're talking about, you know, elite target hog wide receiver one like George Pickens, um, you know, stands might have you believe. I think he is probably a little bit overrated in the dynasty community in terms of best fits, pro projection, scheme fit, and kind of where we're looking at him in fantasy drafts. He projects very well as a contributing factor on the outside. As I talked about, if he can develop, he can probably have, uh, you know, a wide receiver two ceiling for fantasy. But if he's just a deep threat, he may need to go to a team like Kansas City or Green Bay or Buffalo to truly reach that ceiling where we saw DK Metcalf go to Seattle, where he had a, an elite quarterback in Russell Wilson. If DK Metcalf goes to the Jaguars instead of Seattle, we might be talking about a completely different prospect in the NFL. And that for that reason, I, I kind of think that George Pickens is going to go to a team like that, and he's probably going to get overdrafted in rookie drafts if that happens. Now, the ideal fit for him, like I just mentioned, would be a pass-heavy team like Kansas City, pass-heavy team like Buffalo that needs a deep threat for their offense. And in terms of where we want to take this guy in rookie drafts, I think this is a guy that's going to go overdrafted in most rookie drafts. I think most people are going to take him back into the first round very, very highly in the second round, especially if he gets a good landing spot. If he gets a good landing spot, I could see team, if he goes to Kansas City in the first round, I could see a team taking him, you know, inside the top 10 overall picks in rookie drafts. And to me, that's just way too rich for my blood. I don't think he's that good of a prospect. I think I'm comfortable taking George Pickens as a mid second round type of rookie pick. But if he goes to one of those great spots, like I mentioned, he's probably going to get pushed up the board and likely be one of the first wide receivers off the board in your rookie draft. So overall, I'm probably going to steer clear of George Pickens at rookie drafts. I do have a lot of leagues where I have a lot of back end first round picks, early second round picks, but I will probably favor guys like Jahan Dotson and David Bell and maybe some of these quarterbacks if they get good draft capital and get, get good landing spots. So if you guys enjoyed this video at any point, again, hit the like button. It really helps us out, really helps us grow. Comment any of your thoughts down below as well. Subscribe to the channel. If you are new, we're closing in on about nine and a half uh, thousand subscribers, really, really pushing to get to 10,000. 
by about the NFL draft if possible. Check out the links in the description, Patreon, Underdog Fantasy, all that kind of stuff uh, would uh, be also appreciated if you want to support us that way. Peace out, guys. We'll talk to you soon.